Coming up on Medical Economics Weekly, family physicians lead the way on EHR adoption. The Watson supercomputer has been offered for medical expertise, and physician groups applaud new legislation to repeal SGR. All that and more coming up. You're watching Medical Economics Weekly. I'm Kevin Stout. I'm Brandon Glenn. This is the show where we keep you up to date on the latest trending news in primary care, practice management, and healthcare social media. Our first headline has to do, do with family physicians and EHR adoption. Family doctors, give yourselves a pat on the back. You lead all specialties in adoption of electronic health records. Now, according to numbers provided by the American Board of Family Medicine, about 68% of family doctors have adopted electronic health record systems already, and that number could jump to 80% by the end of the year. Uh, interestingly, there is a pretty wide variation among states uh, in terms of their EHR adoption among fam family docs. Utah led the way at 95%. North Dakota was last at about 47%. Researchers weren't exactly sure why such wide uh, variations existed among states, but most likely it has to do with uh, incentive payments provided by states uh, to physicians. Yep. Industry leaders in electronic health records products, Cerner and McKesson, are in discussions to make their EHR patient data exchange interoperable. The deal could put Cerner and McKesson in a position to take on Epic Systems, which so far has been reluctant to open up its platforms. The unnamed source was quoted saying that the deal has been on again, off again, but they've spent a lot of money on lawyers and he thinks it's going to happen. Here's one for all the physicians who wish the government would get off their backs and give them a break. The news is, the government might a little. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, otherwise known as the CMS, has proposed cutting what it calls unnecessary and obsolete regulations, and it says that those cuts would save about $700 million annually. Now, generally speaking, the proposed cuts uh, were done with the idea of making it easier for doctors to participate in Medicare programs uh, without compromising patient safety, of course. Anna Wild Matthew at the Wall Street Journal asks, should doctors and patients be Facebook friends? Well, the survey results said 28% yes, 72% no. The article goes on to explore how doctors are using social media in their practices. One example is of Dr. Gary Tolbert from Kentucky. He uses Twitter to communicate health messages. Another example was Dr. Siraj Misra from Michigan. He recalls using Doximity to get in contact with a fellow physician and get a quick answer to a problem he was having. Also, 35% of physicians have received a friend request on Facebook. 58% of those physicians always reject those requests. Now for a story about one of the biggest thorns in the side of U.S. doctors. That is the formula that determines Medicare payment increases. It's known as the SGR or the Sustainable Growth Rate. Uh, a little background on that. Uh, health costs are rising faster than Medicare payment rates would rise under the SGR. Congress has repeatedly passed uh, several patches to fill that gap. What Congress has not done is either reworked the SGR or replaced it with something that works better. Now some new legislation that has been proposed would replace the SGR with a form of value-based payments uh, which would be tied to outcomes. This new legislation is, is supported by virtually all of the big name uh, physicians groups such as the American Medical Association, American Academy of Family Physicians, and American College of Physicians. Uh, the big question though is, is whether this legislation has a chance of actually passing and for that we will need to stay tuned. A recent editorial in BMJ Quality and Safety written by Ronan Rosenblum and David W. Bates asks if patient-centered healthcare, social media, and the internet are coming together to create the perfect storm. To make a comparison between services like Yelp while picking a restaurant and making similar decisions of healthcare uh, using similar services. They're also quoted saying, in 10 years, the question may not be how to use such data, but how we ever lived without it. Now for the latest on the primary care physician shortage. A new study lists a few suggestions for going about uh, relieving that shortage, but primary care doctors probably won't be too crazy about at least one of them. Quick background on the uh, uh, physician shortage. Uh, it's expected to reach uh, over 50,000 um, in the next decade or so. Roughly half of that 50,000 uh, would be with primary care doctors. Reasons for this include uh, aging baby boomer population and more people acquiring health insurance under the Affordable Care Act. 
one way of relieving this shortage that uh, was discussed in this recent study would be to offer same-day appointments to patients, but to divert those, uh, divert many of those patients to either non-physician providers or physician's assistants uh, by diverting about 20% of appointments to non-physician providers. That would probably be enough to relieve the primary care shortage. However, in the past, physicians have not been crazy about um, this, uh, this going this route uh, because they generally feel that it harms the continuity of care and the quality of care. The USA Today reports that the Watson supercomputer is now ready to offer medical expertise. The Watson supercomputer, famous for beating human Jeopardy players a few years ago, is now being offered commercially to doctors and health insurance companies. Two applications developed by IBM have currently been released, one to help diagnose and treat lung cancer, and another to help manage healthcare insurance claims. The general manager at IBM was quick to point out that Watson is not going to ma be making medical decisions. He was quoted saying, Watson is not making the decisions on treatment or authorization. It is essentially reducing the effort for doctors and nurses by going through thousands of pages of information for each case. And now for our Tweet of the Week. We tweeted, new bill would repeal SGR, replace it with outcomes-based payments. But does it have a chance of passing? Robert T. Bailey, MD, replied, Neither corrects the undervalued payment to our PCPs, which has eroded our primary care physician base. Thanks for the re reply, Robert. And to be featured on Tweet of the re Week, engage us at, on Twitter at MedEconomics. Thanks for watching our first episode of Medical Economics Weekly. Please follow us on Twitter at MedEconomics or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MedicalEconomics. And send suggestions and comments to bglenn at AdvancedStar.com or kstout at AdvancedStar.com. We'll be back soon with more healthcare and practice management news. Don't miss it.